Chapter 3. The Journey Starts The next day we prepared for our journey. Guns, tools and scientific instruments arrived all day and were packed into boxes. Poor Martha watched this activity. Professor Lidenbrook has taken you away, she said. Is he mad? I nodded. Where are you going? I pointed down towards the centre of the earth. To the cellar? Martha asked. No, Martha, I replied. Farther down than that. At last everything was packed up and we set off on our journey. We travelled by steamer to Copenhagen. There we met a Danish scientist who gave us letters of introduction to the most important men in Iceland. From Copenhagen we sailed north to Iceland. The sea was very rough and my uncle was seasick for most of the voyage. But when we arrived in Reykjavik, the capital of Iceland, he was happy and excited. He did not want to explore Reykjavik. The most interesting part of Iceland is under the ground, he said. We immediately set off for the home of Dr. Fridriksson. My uncle had a letter of introduction to him. He told Dr. Fridriksson that he was interested in exploring Iceland's geology. That is a very interesting subject, said Dr. Fridriksson. Iceland has many volcanoes which have not been explored. For example, look at the mountain behind us. It is called Sneffels. It has a very interesting crater, but no one ever visits it. Really? said my uncle. He appeared to be calm, but I knew that he was very excited. Is this volcano extinct? Oh, yes, said Dr. Fredrickson. It has not erupted for the last six hundred years. Well said my uncle. I think perhaps we shall explore this Sneffel, Fessels. What do you call it? Sneffels, said Dr. Fridriksson. Dr. Fridriksson was very helpful. He arranged for a guide called Hans to take us to Sneffels. I liked Hans immediately. He was a big man who moved slowly and did not say very much. My uncle liked him too. Hans is a good man, he said, but he does not yet know what we are going to do. So he's coming with us to... Yes, Axel, Hans is coming with us to the centre of the earth. Hans helped us to pack the guns, tools and scientific instruments we had brought with us from Hamburg. Dr. Fridriksson came to see us off and wish us good luck. Hans led us out of Reykjavik. Soon we were in the countryside. We followed a path along the coast. The countryside was bleak. There were no crops and hardly any animals. The grass was yellow and there were large rocks everywhere. Here and there we saw a lonely farmhouse. Sometimes we had to cross inlets and sometimes we had to wait until the tide was out before we could cross. This made my uncle very angry because he did not want to waste any time on his journey. At night we stayed in farmhouses. The Icelanders were always pleased to see us. They gave us the best food and drink they had and refused our offers of money. We now travelled through a strange country. We walked over beds of lava. The rocks were sharp and they hurt our feet. Volcanic rocks rose up above us. They were twisted into strange shapes. At the side of the path steam shot up from hot springs below the earth. No plants or flowers grew in this rocky land. There was nothing but bare rock. I began to feel tired, but my uncle walked very quickly. He never seemed to feel tired. As I walked, I thought about our journey to the center of the earth. We are going to go down into the crater. Sneffels is a volcano. It has not erupted since 1229. My uncle thinks Sneffels is an extinct volcano. B but perhaps it is not extinct, only sleeping. What will happen if it wakes up? What will happen to us then? After three more days, we reached the base of Sneffels. That night, I talked to my uncle about my fears. He told me that Sneffels would not erupt. He tried to prove this to me scientifically, but I could not understand him. I was still worried and full of fear. That night, I had a terrible dream. I dreamed that I was inside a volcano, there was a great explosion, and I was shot up out of the volcano like a rocket. 
We climbed Sneffels for the whole of the next day. We climbed higher and higher. It was harder and harder to breathe because of the thin air. Even my uncle was tired. At eleven o'clock that night, we reached the top of the mountain. We camped at the edge of the crater. We were more than one thousand five hundred meters above sea level. When we awoke the next morning, it was cold and clear. The whole of Iceland was spread out below us like a map. We could even see the coast of Greenland. My uncle did not have time to look at the view. We were at the top of Sneffels, on one of its two peaks. But which one? My uncle asked Hans what the Icelanders called this peak. Skatares, Hans replied. My uncle was delighted. Let us enter the crater, he exclaimed. The crater of Sneffels was shaped like an ice cream cone. The opening was more than a kilometer wide, and was about six hundred meters deep. We used ropes to help us to descend. By noon, we were standing at the bottom of the crater. At the bottom of the crater, there were three chimneys. Each of these was about thirty meters wide. We started to explore them. Suddenly, my uncle gave a shout. He called me over. Look, he said, pointing to a large rock with some marks on it. The marks were letters, and they spelled the name of Arn Saknusum. You see, he asked. Now, do you believe me? We had to discover which of the three chimneys Arn Saknusum had descended. It was the chimney which the shadow of Scartaris touched at the end of June, but there was no shadow today because there was no sun. Today was June the twenty-fifth. If it stayed cloudy until the end of June. There would be no shadow to guide us.